Hello from Wisconsin. My name is Harmony Evison, and I am here today to talk about a fantastic methodology created by Mindwings called the Story Grammar Marker, which was created in 1991. The Story Grammar Marker is the hallmark of which Mindwings connect cognitive linguistic methodology and other kinesthetic tools are based upon. These tools include Brady the Story Braid, Talk to Write, Write to Learn, and Theme Maker. What makes Mindwings cognitive linguistic methodology so wonderful is that it is built upon their view that every child, regardless of age, ability, or culture, can benefit academically, personally, and socially from building his or her discourse skills, which involve narration, conversation, and exposition. Overall, Mindwings goal is to help children think and communicate. To delve further into the Mindwings methodology, they explain that their multi-sensory tools provide an explicit systematic approach to instruction and intervention on story development and content area. Furthermore, their methodology is designed to be implemented across the curriculum and throughout all grade levels, targeting the development of oral language skills necessary for comprehension, writing, crit critical thinking, and social emotional growth. Lastly, Mindwings methodology is quite unique and child-friendly in that their tools are visual, kinesthetic, and tactile, and are made of a series of patented icons that are colorful and meaningful. The tools are three-dimensional, non-linguistic representations of narrative and expository structures. Children can see, touch, and move these icons to cue them for WH questions about stories and also help them to recognize text structures and content areas. These icons represent a complete story episode, including character, setting, initiating event, which they call the kickoff, internal response, feelings and emotions, plans, attempts, direct consequence or consequences, and finally, resolution. For educators, <clears throat> Mindwing's language literacy developmental checklist aids in the assessment and provision of intervention in regard to children's narrative development. In addition, Mindwings icons can also serve as visual kinesthetic cues for expository text structures found in content areas such as science and social studies, which include description, listing, sequencing, cause and effect, problem and solution, compare and contrast, and finally persuasion. Please see the accompanying handout for a picture of their tools. The demonstration that I will provide today will be creating an episode using the Story Grammar Marker. I will de demonstrate this by using the book Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. Please see a copy of a blank episode in the accompanying video handout. The Story Grammar Marker is perfect for helping students to visualize the elements within a story. The 24-inch braided tool uses icons that represent and sequence the components necessary to retell and write a story and is available for purchase at www.mindwingsconcepts.com. When using this product with students or clients, you provide them with the necessary structure to visualize the components of a story by pointing to pictures on the story grammar marker. Then, when students tell a story to you, they can hold the Story Grammar Marker tool <clears throat> to make sure they remember all the important elements. I do not have the actual tool for this demonstration, but a picture of the tool is included in the handout. I will demonstrate how to use an episode map. You can follow along using the complete episode map included in the handout. The parts of an episode are <clears throat> the main character, who or what the story is about, the setting, where and when does the story take place, what usually happens there, what does the character see, hear, smell, touch, and taste, the initiating event, what they call the kickoff, what happened to the character to cause him or her to do something, the internal response, which, is, which are the feelings, how did the character feel about what happened, this is the emotional response to the kickoff. <clears throat> plan. What does the character want to do? Why will he or she choose this plan? What prior knowledge, thoughts, and memories does the character have about the kickoff? 
The next beads are the attempts that the character makes to come to the resolution. Following the attempts, the attempts is the direct consequence, which they call the tie-up. What happened as a result of the attempts? Is there a complication in the plan? And finally, the last one is the resolution. How does the character feel about the direct consequence? Is there a lesson learned or a moral to the story? The story I'm going to demonstrate today is Stella Luna <clears throat> by Janelle Cannon. I completed an episode following Stella Luna's story plot. The episode for Stella Luna goes like this. The main character is Stella Luna. The setting is in the forest, introducing her bird friends, her bat friends, and showing them how to fly at night. The initiating event, suddenly she saw that birds couldn't see where they were going and were plunging to the ground. Her internal response, she was worried and scared for her bird friends. Her plan, she wanted them to be safe. Her first attempt, she swooped and grabbed them in the air. Second attempt, she lifted them to a tree. Third, finally, she hung from a limb above the birds. <clears throat> the direct consequence, the birds were safe as a result of her actions. And finally, the resolution to the story of Stella Luna is that she was relieved that she was able to rescue her friends. She learned that bats and birds can be very different and very much alike. And the moral of the story of Stella Luna is that friends can be different, but still be friends. And there is a completed episode of Stella Luna in the handout. <clears throat> you may print and follow along if you'd like. As you can see, Mindwing Story Grammar Marker is an excellent way to teach the elements of a story. It's easy to use and engages the intention of students and clients. For more information, please visit www.mindwingsconcepts.com. I will continue this video with a reading of Stella Luna for those of you who are not familiar with it or who are interested in hearing it again. For the rest of you that are already familiar with this story or who aren't interested, thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed my demonstration. Goodbye from Wisconsin. Okay, and now for a reading of Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. If you'd like, you can follow along as I read Stella Luna and complete the blank um, episode map, if you'd like. Stella Luna. In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, Mother Bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful birds swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster into the forest below. The dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings around her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Flump! Stella Luna landed headfirst into a soft downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna, Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh! Here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Stella Luna, 
Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs, even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them, Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself, then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we will get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs. So that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat. I am hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. <clears throat> Stella Luna told them her story. You ate bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child, a bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl? cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we will crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. 
come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leapt, leapt from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled, howled Flitter. Ah, shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in the silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Flap. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends and that's a fact. That end.